started my business actually in 2014. But before I did that, I was actually a domestic worker. Because the 16, at the time I received um, my, I was pregnant with my daughter. Couldn't go back to school at the time. You guys are very lucky today that you could actually go back to school after still going with your stomach and giving birth. And um, couldn't go back to school, worked around, asked people, because then at the age of, say, 21, I already had three kids. So having three kids actually needs papa, most you know, ne? that they're always just hungry and everybody wants to eat, and if there's no money, they're more hungry. So um, that's when I started asking people if I can iron your washing or if I could clean up for you or babysit your kids while you go going to work. With a little bit of money started buying myself, I went to a factory where they actually make um, lingerie, I would buy the underwear for male, female, expenses, etc. Go out and sell that. Got that money, back to food in the house, that's how we carried on. And um, I got a job at the factory in uh, Juan Fontaine. The company was called Gerald Yosh at the time. And uh, because I was um, un, um, unskilled, they said, okay, look, the only thing we can assist you right now is because you're so desperate, you're really looking for a job. We can actually then just make you become a, a table hand. So a table hand is when people are busy working and cutting the fabrics, they throw everything onto the floor, and that's where Angela comes and she takes the broom sweeps up all the dirt and make sure that the place keeps clean because remember uh, in anything we do safety and housekeeping is the number one key right so went on did that my passion was always sewing so um one lady never came to work for a week. They asked, they, they asked who's willing to assist. I said, please, can I do it? And they were still arguing and saying, oh, you know what, no, Angela, um, you know, who's going to clean up here? I said, no, I'll go and do the overlocking and then in my lunchtime, I'll come back and clean. They said, okay, if you're willing to do that, then let's give you a try. Gave me a try, put me on the machine. That's where I showed them that, look, this is Angela, and um, if I want to do something, I'm going to do it the right way, the first time. Put me on the machine, I worked there, they never took me off again. They found somebody else to do the cleaning. And that's how I worked myself up. I've been in the industry now for the past, my daughter is 33, um, in the industry for 33 years. At the age of when I turned 33, actually, I worked at the factory in Marysburg. <coughs> Next to our factory was an empty space in the basement. Spoke to the guy, said to him, Look, man, I'm interested in opening up my own business. And he said to me, Hey, Angela, you know what? I've got so many people looking for the place, blah, blah, blah. But uh, let me think about it, then you'll come and see me at the end of the week. All right, obviously, because we all believe in God. Gave my story to the Lord, and I said, look, I want that place. I want to start my own business. Because, I mean, everybody's got a talent in this room. You know what you like. You know what you're interested in. That is why I'm saying, if you want to make your business work, it needs to be your passion. If you're going into, some, some, if you're going into something because um, John is making money, John knows what he's doing because that's his passion. So you need to focus on what you want to do. And if it's your passion, I guarantee you, you're going to have to work hard at it, but it's really going to happen for you. So I worked, 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 got the place by the guy. The guy said to me, you know what, Angela, I haven't been sleeping. Um, you know, it was a Muslim guy, <clears throat> so obviously, uh, what our religions these days, 
Muslim people look after Muslim people, Christians look after Christians. So he said to me, you know what, Ange, my guys will actually be disappointed because I've got so many of my brothers asking me for the place, but he said, I just couldn't sleep, so you can have the place. I said, okay, thank you. He said to me, look, the rental will be about 3,000 rand a month. And remember, I was earning 550 rand a week. My husband was unemployed. I got there 550, and this guy wants 3,000 rand a month. But he said to me, look, Angela, what we're going to do is, I'm going to give you the place for three months. You check it out and see how it goes. Remember, I did not have a clue about where I'm going to be getting my first client from. But I told myself, this is what I want to do. I used to, because the place was next door, it's like basically, yeah. So this is the basement, and that's where I'm working. And at the time, cell phones actually started helping us where they had this callback thing, you know. Then my husband would give me a call back, and um, there was a toilet at the bottom. We had to go down to the bottom. Now, the place that we that I got was also just next door. And I know people like, you know, I get that, like I'm going to the toilet. Meanwhile, I'm running in there, and then they'll say to me, oh, don't you want to stitch this fly for me quickly? And I'm like, no, if my boss can see me now, it's going to be a big problem. And then I did it anyway. Went back on it for two weeks, and then I just realized, you know what, man? I mean, you ask from God, and this is what He gives you, and you're still not listening, or you're still so unsure, because remember, we're all scared, because if there's not an income, you think to yourself that, oh, if I now leave this 550, what are we going to eat? But then I said to myself, you know what, if the birds out there are eating every day, every day the birds eat. Because you know why? The ants eat because they're not lazy. That is why I'm saying that's the first key. Laziness is not going to work. I left my job, went to my boss, did it the right way. I didn't just walk out and didn't go back because I would be giving myself a bad reputation. And one day, if things doesn't work, I need to go back or maybe ask him to give me a second chance. And I went to him, I said, look, this is what I've decided. I want to become my own boss. I said, look, I need to start my thing off. I can help you. If you've got things, send it over to me. I'll assist you with the stitching, etc. He said to me, okay, no, it's fine. Left. When I walked in, my husband looked at me with big eyes. Because he's like, because remember with us, we used to wear overalls. So knowing if you have your overall and your scissors in your hand, that means you're not working anymore. And... Um, I said to him, look, the only thing we need to do now is pray. The rest shall follow. And believe you me, um, before we actually got an accreditation from the FPNM CETA, um, we got our first client. People, I met a guy when my husband said before, one roll of cotton and a piece of lining. And uh, I met this one guy, and he's like, morning, morning. He says, hi, what do you do? I said, I manufacture furniture, um, and I do recoveries and slip covers, etc." And the guy said to me, are you serious? I'm like, yes. He said to me, Edge, um, you know what? I've got a supplier. He's actually letting me down. I've got so many chairs that I need uh, manufactured. Can you assist me? And I said, yes, I can. He took my number, and he said to me, he's going to call me back. I went back to the factory because the basement that we, received, that we got from that guy, I only had one sewing machine and a small compressor. And um, I told my husband out of excitement, I'm like, oh, you know what, babe? Um, we got this guy who wants us to manufacture chairs. And my husband looked at me and because he's matriculated. You know, when you matriculated and uh, somebody else is haven't finished school, so you think, you know, are these people, you just don't think. And he said to me, Angie, are you serious? We don't even have one machine. Number one, to manufacture chairs. We need pen saws, we need rub saws, we need sandpapering machines. We cannot take on that work. I said to him, you know what? Um, I told the guy we can do it. He's like, okay, you're going to do it because I don't know what machine's going to be using, but you're going to do it. I said, no, it's fine, we'll do it. 
the guy called me while we arguing the phone rings the guy calls he's like angela i'm outside so here he comes so now at the time i got the flight because i'm like oh okay my husband was talking about the machine and here's the guy now but you know what when the guy came in there he wasn't even interested whether the place is empty or not he showed me these chairs three styles three different designs said angela i need uh, i need a hundred of these i need 40 of these and i need 80 of these can you help me i said yes i can he said to me okay can you give me a quotation i said to him okay look it's already five can i get back to you tomorrow morning read the pricing me again god please help me i've never charged anyone to make a new chair <laughs> so i need some advice or just give me some sort of an idea and in the morning i got up i told my i told my husband i said you know what i'm gonna give i'm gonna charge this guy 750 a cheap my husband says to me you know what you haven't even worked out the wood and the blah 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 you know you, in business you need to do this i said okay i'll charge him 750 and then we'll see when we're making the chairs what are what's the costs to actually manufacture this old dining chair Called the guy, I told him, look, 750. He said to me, Angela, you know what? I'm gonna be honest with you. The guy that used to make the chairs for me charged me 850. I'm gonna give you 850. I said, thank you very much. He said to me, okay, I'm gonna see you at 12. Remember, we don't have any money because I've now left my job. The guy came at around 1230 came into the little office where I was sitting, he didn't even go into the factory. He just said to me, Angela, okay, I've worked out everything. I'm going to give you 80,000 rand deposit. Right, he said to me, okay, take the 80,000 rand, they'll drop off all the fabrics. I've given the fabric houses your address, so they will drop off the fabrics at your factory and then we get started. The guy left, I called my husband, I said to him, Here's the money for the machines. He looked at me, he said to me, seriously? I said, yes, now you can go and buy the machines and then we can start manufacturing. He said to me, uh, who's gonna make the chairs? I said to him, you know what, remember, I've been in this industry since the age of 16. I know frame makers, I know posters, I know everybody. So I'll speak to my guys. I asked him if they can't assist us, even if it's after five or weekends. Luckily, we found a guy that said, look, Angela, where I worked, the factory has closed down. I can assist you. The guy came, he made frames, and that's how we carried on. So, um, 33 years later, I had a big factory in Marisburg. We had about, say, let's say 55 people working for us. And most of them were also school leavers. When they leave school, they'll be like, Auntie Ange, you know what? Can, I, can you please, I, I really need a job. I said, okay, look, you're gonna come in. This is what I'm gonna give you, because I'm actually teaching you how to end up making friends. Like you see all these youngsters that's making all these high-end furniture, frames that we manufactured here. Those guys that came to us knowing nothing. So, if I can say to you, I'm happy that you guys want to actually be your own boss and um, do what you want to do. Passion, number one. Number two, hard work. Number three, not only thinking about the money, but also thinking, like remember if you want to grow your business, you can't start up from the top. If you get funding from the government, yes, you're lucky, because these days most of the youth do get funding, and then they start driving nice beards and stuff, and after that, there's nothing to show for it. So guys, I think do what you need to do. Go out there and show the world that you're actually a better person, and create jobs for the next generation to come and show them that look you guys are key on what you're doing you're doing things straight 
And if you're honest with yourself, then things will work out for you. All right? Is that all? Thank you, guys. I hope it was so I'm one of a student under Ort SA. As I'm here, I'm doing my practical under Pitch Perfect. As soon as the learnership is finished, got my certificate, I start my own uh, a company of frame making. I would like to thank the ORT for this um, opportunity. Um, I, I also have a business, a uh, deco and catering business. So this will help, help me a lot in improving my business and growing my business more because I've learned so much. So I'm happy that I got this opportunity to be in this leadership because uh, there's so much that I want to learn and there's so much that they have taught me so far about um, the risk of the business that I'll be um, the industry that I'll be in.